Sunday morning and welcome. Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review. We thank God for you on this day. Topic of our discussion, topic of our review. I always use the word discussion because and review. Discussion again because the goal is to ignite discussion within your home. Dis ignite discussion within you, your personal self as we review God's word by way of Sunday school. Again, today we'll be talking about justified by faith in Christ. Again, justified by faith in Christ. This is lesson number 10 for those who follow us weekly, those who follow along with the lesson series, lesson number 10, the Bible basis and or the content of our discussion is based upon Galatians, the second chapter, verses 15 through 21. We thank God for this sixth day of February. This day is a new day that we have not experienced before in a new month, hallelujah, and in a new year. We thank God for his goodness to us on this Sunday morning. I'd like to give honor to our leaders. We salute our leaders, our pastor and first lady of the Unity Church of God in Christ, Pastor Anthony Rogers and First Lady Charlene Rogers. I also acknowledge, salute and honor those of you who have joined us today, Facebook, YouTube, you who are part of the Unity community, you are at the right place to receive whatever it is that you're looking for from God on today. Thank God for our Sunday School Superintendent, Deacon Joe Daniels, and his companion working there closely by his side, Sister Annie Daniels. And I also thank God for the opportunity, for the privilege to stand before you, to share God's word, to expound on how good God is by way of Sunday school. Hallelujah. Our memory verse today, our memory verse, the verse that we are to hold to our train of thought, that verse that we're to center our focus, hallelujah, is found in Galatians, that second chapter, verses 19 and 20. As is customary, we will read the King James Version, and immediately following is the New International Version. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live, in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God. Hallelujah, who loved me and gave himself for me. The NIV, for through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. Hallelujah, that person that I once was, I no longer live to fulfill the desires of that individual. But Christ, hallelujah, he lives inside of me now. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Again, that is our memory verse. That is the verse that we are to place in the center of our minds and our patterns of thought, hallelujah, that verse that we focus and concentrate. Oh God, let this verse come alive in me. 
Praise the Lord. That is our prayer as we review weekly our memory verses. We will review this a little deeper as we go along and continue our lesson review. Our lesson aim today, by the end of the lesson, we will individually and collectively, number one, know Paul's argument against salvation by works. We will appreciate Christ's saving work on the cross, excuse me, on the earth, and deepen our faith in Jesus. Let me say that one more time. Number one, we will know Paul's argument against salvation by works. Number two, appreciate Christ's saving work on the earth. And three, deepen our faith in Jesus. As is customary, each week we take the words in our lesson aim and we explore them to expand our knowledge, to expand our understanding so as we apply God's word to our lives to increase and enhance our path, to increase his will in our lives, we have a full and knowledgeable understanding of words and how to do and how to obtain results Hallelujah. How to facilitate and guarantee the move and will of God in your life. Know, appreciate, and deepen. Know to be aware of, and these words are redundant again. Some of these words have been used in previous lesson names. They're done so to ensure that we are familiar to make sure there is no shadow of doubt. There is no ambiguity. <laughs> there is no confusion that you, a believer, you, a Sunday school student, you, a follower of Christ, have what is necessary to succeed in your pursuit of righteousness. Again, to know to be aware of through observation, to know, to be aware of through inquiry, to be aware of through information, or having had developed a relationship through meeting and spending time with someone, to be familiar with, to be friendly with, to recognize the behavior of, to discern who someone is. When you know them, you have taken time to understand who they are. Praise God. And then when you appreciate, you're able to appreciate because you have done the necessary work, the homework to get to know. And when you know, then you appreciate. You can understand a situation fully. You understand and can appreciate the full impact of what, hallelujah, someone or something can offer. You recognize and appreciate the full worth or value of knowing, hallelujah. And then to deepen is to increase your knowledge or understanding of a subject, of a topic. You learn more about it. You increase, hallelujah, your knowledge. You increase what you appreciate by enhancing, excuse me, enhancing or increasing, hallelujah, your understanding. All of these things represent what is necessary to deepen. Praise God. When you deepen, you become stronger or more powerful. Hallelujah. When you deepen, it is a verb. Deepen represents action. You just do not increase 
by sitting, hallelujah, and patiently <laughs> doing nothing. Oh, hallelujah. But you deepen by activity. You deepen by increasing your knowledge. You deepen, hallelujah, by strengthening your relationship and understanding. To know, to appreciate, and deepen is our lesson aim focus today. Our Bible truth, Bible application, and Bible learning are as follows. Our Bible truth lets us know if for eternal salvation we place our faith in anything or any other person than Christ, our faith is misplaced. In such case, Paul stated that Jesus died in vain. The truth of everything that we discuss and read applicable to today's lesson is if we have faith in any other thing, hallelujah, any other thing other than Jesus Christ the righteous, our faith, our trust, it is misplaced, hallelujah, it is misplaced. And when something is misplaced, it is lost. Our Bible application to learn to say that anything else is needed for our salvation is to cheapen. It's to decrease the value of Christ's death for us. Hallelujah. And then our Bible learning to understand that Jesus died to take the punishment for our sins, and that is all that is needed. Our Bible truth, our Bible application, and Bible learning speak to the fact that Jesus did what was necessary. He paid everything by his sacrifice. We don't know anyone a promissory note. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah, there is nothing we owe, but we are indebted to him. Thus, Paul encouraging the believers in today's lesson that anything else you hear, praise the Lord, your faith is misplaced because Jesus himself, Jesus alone, has paid the ransom. He gave his life, and if you hear anything else, it is contrary to the good news and to the gospel. And if you hear and believe in anything else, you will find yourself and your faith misplaced. And again, being misplaced is lost. Hallelujah. Justification. Justified. Having been shown to be just or right having a good reason for something. Justified from a biblical perspective, the very act by which God moves a willing person from the state of sin or injustice to the state of grace or justice. And then two, the change in a person's condition, again moving them to a state of sin to a state of righteousness, justification. We have faith, faith. This is topic word association. Our topic of discussion is justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. If you purchase a can of Coca-Cola. <laughs> you have every confidence that when you open that can, it is going to deliver the taste, hallelujah, that you expect. Confidence, having faith is confidence in what we hope for 
and the assurance that the Lord is working even though we cannot see it, faith knows that no matter what the situation in our lives, hallelujah, the Lord is working it out on our behalf. And then when we have, we are in, again, faith in, when we are in something, it indicates inclusion. The word in represents inclusion. The word in, I in, represents being positioned inside, being positioned within something, contained within something, being surrounded by something, being enclosed by something. When we are justified, in Jesus Christ, we are included. Hallelujah. We are positioned inside. Oh, hallelujah. We are contained and surrounded by glory. Thus, our being justified in, again, inclusion, positioned inside and within. We are justified in him. Praise the Lord. Today, I always look at these Sunday school lessons and to myself, they give us an appeal. There is an appeal with every lesson that we read. There is an appeal with every lesson we review. Life is not easy. Hallelujah. But we have a Savior who can help our challenges. He can make them manageable. And we, as for stated earlier, do not owe him one cent, not a consultation fee. Jesus already paid the price. There's an old song, only what you do for Christ will last. We do many things for many reasons every day in our lives to show love and to be nice. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have other actions that do not represent being nice. <laughs> but in everything we do, people, let's remember that only what we do for Jesus Christ, our motivation, our actions will matter at the end. Those are the only things that will be considered on the day of judgment. Let's confirm what motivates us? Let's confirm what motivates our thoughts and actions today. Today's lesson, our background, we have been in the Old Testament. We've been talking about the promises of Abraham and how God fulfilled those promises or was fulfilling those promises through Abraham's offspring. Praise God. And we learned of the move of God in the books of Genesis and Exodus. This week we've transitioned to the New Testament, specific to the book of Galatians, talking about Paul. Praise God. And we've learned all about Paul. We've been remote and online for a few years now. And in at our early lessons in 2020 and some in 2021, we learned all about Paul, his conversion, every his background, his history. We know he was of Jewish ancestry. He was named Saul after Israel's first king. He was born in Tarsus. His family relocated to Jerusalem, and he was educated as a Pharisee. We know those Pharisees were very dedicated to the law. Hallelujah. But Paul also had a name change when he encountered Jesus Christ on his way. Praise God to do what he was doing at that time. To sum it up, Saul was responsible for rounding up Christians and persecuting them for their belief in Jesus 
which to his understanding was contrary to the law. It was contrary, belief in Jesus was contrary to his strict understanding as a Pharisee. Hallelujah. It did not coincide with the law as interpreted. That was Saul. Hallelujah. But we also have Paul. As referenced, Paul had a name change. Paul is now responsible for generating large crowds and teaching Gentiles, <laughs> non-Jewish converts to believe and trust beyond everything to believe and trust in Jesus and Jesus alone. And Paul was positioned to accomplish this mission. This is a little background as we go into our lesson scripture. Jesus saved Paul on the road to Damascus as I referenced. You can read all about Paul's change and conversion in the book of Acts. I encourage you to do so. Paul knew, Paul trusted and believed Jesus and what he could do beyond a shadow of a doubt because of what he had done for Paul in lieu of his obedience and commitment to Jesus. Hallelujah. When Paul committed to following Jesus, he was justified. <laughs> Paul was serious about his salvation and the interpretation of what God requires. Paul was serious because that was his nature. That was his personality. Again, that was how he was raised. He was raised to have a very strict view of the law, of the letter of the law. Praise God. And we know those individuals who study, who like law, like reading, like language, <laughs> like everything there is about the law and are such. Praise God. That's who Paul was. Paul was chosen because of who and what he was and the qualities that existed. Are you too very thankful to God for everything he has done for you? Are you too very serious in doing everything you can do to ensure your life is reflective to the onlooker that Jesus saves no matter what? Praise God. This is the position that Paul found himself in, encouraging others to believe in Jesus no matter what. As I forestated, Paul was a no-nonsense person. He was about the job and about doing his job with excellence. Paul believed the power of the gospel from the inside out, from the heart to the mind. This is conveyed again by Paul's conversion as referenced in the book of Acts. People of God, just as God did for Abraham, just as he did for Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, God changed who they were. God gave them new names. God was also expanding and doing the same thing. Hallelujah. He was using Paul to do it. God used Paul. God changed his name from Saul to Paul. God used him to expand his message his promises to expand it 
beyond the those of Jewish heritage to the hallelujah people of the Gentiles, those who were born out of Jewish heritage, those who did not have ancestry in lineage. God gave them provision. They now had access through Jesus Christ, the righteous, and it was Paul's duty. By letter of direction, Jesus Christ, the righteous, to convey this message and to ensure that everyone who heard him, everyone who heard him knew the message was different, knew the message was distinct. He wanted them to hear a clear, concise message and to also have a clear, concise message understanding that Jesus saved regardless of who you were, where you were from, and what your background was. Jesus was extending salvation to all by way of Paul. Again, just as he had changed Abraham's name, excuse me, the names of others, he did it for Paul. He changed his name and expanded his footprint so that he would be the apostle to many. Hallelujah. Thank God for using Paul. Thank God for using us today to expand his message of salvation through Jesus Christ. A message Paul carried with him everywhere he went, but also a message that you and I carry with us everywhere we go by word and deed. A message inspired from the inside out. Part one of our lesson today is the purpose of the law. Again, the purpose of the law. It's found in Galatians 2, verses 15 through 16, part 1, the purpose of the law. In looking at the word purpose, we know purpose is the reason for which something is done. Purpose is the reason for which something is created or for which it exists. <laughs> the reason something is used. Hallelujah. The law, the purpose of the law was to identify the children of Israel as the people of God. They were chosen by God. They were governed by his statutes. They were protected and cared for by God because they were adhering to they were following his laws. Praise the Lord. And then we know the word law. It represents a system of rules which a particular country or community recognizes and allows them to be implemented to regulate the actions of its members. And when necessary, those same laws can be used to enforce penalties. Hallelujah. Laws are implemented to put in place, to set, hallelujah, in order. Thus, the use of laws. And per our lesson commentary this week, there are three types of laws that were over observed in the Jewish community. There was a moral law, and many represent or refer to the Ten Commandments with reference to moral law. The moral law represented an attitude of the heart reflecting our love toward God and our love toward others. Again, the Ten Commandments was a 
directive of our love to God and how we were to love others. There was also civil law. <laughs> civil law was detailed how you are to actually accomplish living the Ten Commandments and are the moral law. And then there were ceremonial laws, sacrifices that governed the priestly systems. Praise God. And so we had moral, civil, and ceremonial that were being observed by the children of Israel. Paul was writing to the Galatian church because there was confusion that was taking place. Non-believers in Jesus Christ had infiltrated the believers. These were people who did not believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. There were people then who did not believe in Jesus just as we have those now among us who do not believe. They believed in the law and everything it represented. Praise God, they believed in the letter of the law as opposed to the creator of the law. They believed in the letter of the law but did not fully believe in the one who sent the one who established the law. If you're looking at the law of the children of Israel, it includes the Ten Commandments, but it is also inclusive of instructions outlined in the books of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and some things were reiterated in the book of Deuteronomy, and new things were also added. Some scholars note there were as many as 600 plus laws the children of Israel had to obey. There was confusion because these individuals who had infiltrated one of the new Gentile converts, those who believed in Jesus Christ, those who knew absolutely nothing about the law, they wanted them to temper or to measure their belief with the application of the law. As you can imagine, this brought about confusion and dissension. This message brought about division. People of God, when God is moving, and the power of God is making a difference in the lives of people, in the lives of men, women, and children, when the message of God is expanded to the masses, oh, there are some that get angry. <laughs> and some that don't know how to act. And thus confusion. But we know that God is not the author of confusion. Thus, we have our message today from Paul. Paul speaking to the Galatians. Paul, excuse me, Paul speaking to these new converts. And we might ask, huh, why was Paul chosen to do this? Why did God call why did Jesus Christ reach out and recruit Paul directly? Paul was perfect for this task. Paul was morally obedient to the law. <laughs> he was a perfect example of someone who obeyed the law. Paul's actions were morally acceptable for that time. His actions of persecuting believers in Jesus Christ. Paul was within the law. He was obeying the law. Hallelujah. 
but for many, Paul's actions were reprehensible. For many, Paul's actions were heinous, but again, Paul was following the letter of the law as interpreted. Paul was making a difference. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ was using Paul to expand the message of salvation to all. It was necessary for Paul to lay out on the line who he was. Hallelujah. To make a difference in the lives of these men and women at this Galatian church, he needed to set them right. He needed to mitigate and to eliminate any confusion. He needed to ensure that their understanding was accurate. Therefore, Paul begins, hallelujah, to give a timeline of his actions to validate and substantiate his words of encouragement. In that first chapter of the book of Galatian, Paul backed up his words, hallelujah, with statements and facts. I encourage you as a believer to read Galatians chapter one, Galatians chapter two in its entirety. It is necessary to understand today's lesson. It's even necessary to understand next week's lesson because we remain in the book of Galatians next week. We just go on to that third chapter. Hallelujah. Paul used his personal experience to validate and substantiate his encouragement are his encouraging words to the Galatian church. People of God, we too have to be like Paul, our witness of what God is and has been to us is compelling. It speaks to the mind. Our witness speaks to the heart of men and women. Paul is concise with his words. He notes and acknowledges in that 15th and 16th verse, we are Jews by nature. We're Jews from birth. We were not born as the Gentiles, but we were chosen of God. However, and this is me paraphrasing, we are enlightened. We have now been informed because we have accepted Jesus as our Savior, we now realize that our birth and our heritage are not substitutes for salvation. Hallelujah. We know that our actions are our activities are driven. Hallelujah by Jesus and not the law. Many acknowledge and take pride in, as we all should, that being law-abiding citizens make us feel great. It should, but the reward is just that. You feel great. Hallelujah. You stay out of trouble. You are recognized as a contributing member of society. You are allowed the freedoms that go along with an individual who follows the law. That's all the law does. It keeps you in good moral standing with your fellow man and woman when you obey and hear and follow along with it. Again, however, the law is not a substitute for salvation. 
The law does not substitute the change that Jesus can make in your life. Hallelujah. The law does not substitute what saying yes to Jesus will do. Paul gave a timeline of who he was, what he did, how he at one time persecuted those who believed, but how when he met Jesus, his message changed, how he no longer had a desire to fulfill what was written in the law, how his understanding, how his mindset, how his will, how his desires changed after he met Jesus. He realized that he was living beneath his privilege. He was enforcing the law but had no reason and understanding as to why he was doing what he was doing. Hallelujah. In other words, Paul let them know that day, I don't care who you are, where you were born, or what you have been taught. Today, Jesus is the answer. Today, Paul was letting them know that setting Jesus is our reason for being. Paul let them know that that day, Jesus Christ, not the law, nothing else you've heard, Jesus is, was, and will be the center of your joy. If there's anyone that is teaching, preaching, or saying anything contrary to this, Paul's instruction was, do not listen, do not hear them. People of God, we are justified by faith in Jesus. We are not justified by the letter of the law. We're talking about works. Works in the scripture equate to the actions that you obey, your actions as you adhere to the law. Again, I'll state that Paul was obeying the law when he was persecuting the people of God, but it was not until something happened on the inside that he realized that persecution was incorrect. There was a change that took place on the inside of Paul. Hallelujah. There was a change that separated him from his dedication to law enforcement, to being a messenger of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The law, people of God. We again talking about part one, the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law was only a band-aid. <laughs> For what Jesus could do, it provided temporary relief to help for that moment, to help for that time. Hallelujah. In chapter 1, verse 10, Paul asked a rhetorical question. Is he trying to win the approval of humans or of mankind, or the approval of God. I'm telling you today, the law of Moses is not a substitute for salvation. You can observe every law and still be lost. You can observe every law and still be misplaced your affection, your dedication, your allegiance misplaced. Hallelujah. You can be applying the law to your life and be lost. 
Jesus Christ affords us salvation. Glory to God. Salvation and life more abundantly through him. The law applied only to your actions, but Jesus Christ the righteous applies salvation to the heart, to the mind, and from the inside out, your actions are governed, your actions are directed, your actions are predicated by being justified by faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Jesus fulfilled all the promises of the law. That was his purpose. Part two, Christ lives in me. Part two, Christ lives in me. This is Galatians, the second chapter, verses 17 through 21. In these Four verses, Paul continues to stress the importance of pay placing our faith in Jesus Christ. Placing our faith in Jesus for what he can do and is willing to do for us if we trust him. As I've said many times throughout my discussion or talking today, Jesus paid the price. Hallelujah. The ransom for our salvation has already been paid. He gave his life voluntarily for us. His life fulfilled what the law could not. Jesus Christ filled the gaps that existed in the law. Jesus Christ filled the gaps that exist in our personal, individual lives today. All these gaps, hallelujah, everything that was missing was satisfied by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus rose with all power, and because of this, Today, we have a right to the tree of life through him. We have a right, hallelujah, to be governed by him, in him, and through him. As Matthew 28, 18 references, he has all power. Paul notes in the 17 through 21 verse, if anyone else should claim, come and proclaim the law being more important than Jesus, they are wrong. They are transgressors. They are incorrect. Again, the law was only a band-aid. It was a temporary fix, but infection had set in. The world needed help. The law was not sufficient to contain, to maintain. The law was not able to justify. Hallelujah. We talked about what the word in represented earlier. The law was not able to contain within. So the world needed a new solution. The world needed a cure for what was ailing it then and now. Hallelujah. Salvation was a gift God gave through his son. Jesus fulfilled the law with his birth. Jesus fulfilled the law with his death and resurrection. When he arose, he fulfilled all the promises. Hallelujah. When he arose, he transitioned our focus from the letter to the originator. 
He transitioned our focus from the letter to the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. We were no longer concerned about the letter because we had a direct relationship with the author and finisher. God changed the trajectory of our life by allowing us and giving us the opportunity to follow Jesus Christ, the righteous. Our lives, thank God, are no longer dedicated to sacrifices and rules. Oh, but Jesus paid it all because he made the ultimate sacrifice by giving his life. Because of what Christ did, his dying on the cross, it expanded our access. It expanded access over all. Hallelujah. We now have direct contact. <laughs> Paul notes in these verses, because of this, he is now dead to the law. Why? Because Jesus again died to fulfill the law. The law and the impacts of it are no longer applicable because it has been fulfilled. We're now talking about salvation. We've moved beyond the law to salvation. I now live, Paul notes. I now think. I know now. I do all of this because of Jesus Christ. Because of him, I can truly live. Paul continues, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, because of the Christ in me, I live. Not necessarily is it me, the old man, the old Saul, the old way of thinking, of persecuting my old understanding, but it is Jesus who lives in me now. Jesus who met me on Damascus, the road to Damascus. Jesus who changed my mind, who changed my heart, who made me look at men and women differently. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. He notes again that he is crucified with Christ. And he's no longer living to fulfill the law, but to fulfill the will of Jesus Christ who sent him. The will of Jesus Christ who called him out. Paul is living to expand and expound the message that Jesus saves and everyone, regardless of who you are, regardless of your title, it includes you. Even those of you who have lofty titles. Hallelujah. If you find yourself in a sin condition where you have misplaced, hallelujah, the appropriate, oh, lifestyle, the appropriate desire to live holy, you too, can get back on track. All you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ the righteous and what he can do for you. We must have faith in Jesus. Hallelujah. There's nothing that the letter of the law can do to help you. We know salvation comes to us by no other name other than Jesus Christ, the righteous. Hallelujah. God who loved Paul. Hallelujah. Loved him. Stopped him on the road to Damascus. Does the same thing 
for us today. We are also crucified with Christ. He gives us the ability to live this life we lead and to live it more abundantly. I asked us earlier today to think about why we do what we do. Why are we living this life? Are we living this life to be morally good citizens? Or are we living this life to live again? Are we living this life because we have inspiration from the inside out? Hallelujah. Jesus gave his life as a ransom for many and anyone else coming to you, preaching anything else other than seeking Jesus Christ and him crucified, we should not hear. He and she who hath an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. There are many teachers and many listeners who have itching ears. But it behooves us today, again, to note that we are crucified with Christ. And because of him, we now have the ability to overcome our old man, to overcome the old thoughts, the desires, and those things that inspired us Hallelujah, to now live peaceably with all men and women as we pursue this life of holiness. Again, the law applied to our actions, blood, the blood of Jesus, glory it applies to our heart, to our mind, and from the inside out, it dictates our actions. And when you're a child of God, hallelujah, your actions always fall within the letter of the law of the land in which you reside. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Reap the blessings of God by Hallelujah, promoting the fact that Jesus saves beyond anything else, no matter what. I don't care who comes to you, what their title is, how long they've been in church, if they come to you with anything other than the fact that Jesus saves, don't listen to them. Hallelujah. For those of you who join in and watch us weekly, next week will be lesson number 11. As I referenced, we'll be in Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. The topic of discussion will be freed from law through Christ. Again, Jesus paid it all. Free from law through Jesus Christ. Next week will be February 13th. We look to you joining us. Our prayer today, dear Father, we thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us. Help us to put our whole trust in him for our salvation and for our daily living. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Please remember to give. Your giving options are displayed at the bottom of the screen and tune in to us promptly at 11 a.m. for an awesome, impactful, powerful Word of God coming to you from the Unity Church of God in Christ. Be blessed.